Hi everyone, welcome back to Art of the Part. I'm out in the shop today and I wanted to talk through some of my procedures in second operation and I thought this might be helpful to make a video on for the students. So right now I'm working on the 98432 part and I just finished one of the components and I wanted to go ahead and unload it and load in a new component and measure the first one to see if I have to make any adjustments to my work offset. So the program is uh, finished running. I'm going to go ahead and unlock the door. You can see here that that unlocked. I'm going to pull the door open and you want to make sure that you have your safety glasses on uh, because you don't want coolant or chips to be blowing back in your face. So right now I'm going to go ahead and blow off my coolant. Blow off any chips. Okay. And the part is secure right now in the vise. I have to release it. It's also good to check that my parallels didn't move, so that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my torque wrench and then turn it to release. Go ahead here. And then I'm going to pop this out. And we're just going to take a quick look here. Normally I would blow this off with two hands, uh, but we'll kind of make do here. All right, so we have the part here. I'm gonna go grab a towel really quick. Wipe this off, get any coolant or grease off of it. And we can see that we finished up second operation. My apologies there. And we see we have machine block two. We have the part number 98432. We can see that here on our blueprint. And when we finished second operation, we left these little burrs in these two locations for the holes. And I don't want to go ahead and make a third operation and clean these up or add a chamfer. So what I ended up doing was modified a little drill point here to go ahead and drill these two locations so I don't have to set this up back in the machine again. So that'll remove the burr. Okay. I'll feel it with my hand. I can still see, uh, feel a high point on this one, so I'll go ahead and run it again. Okay. So that feels pretty good. I can see here on the blueprint that I have a Z dimension of 7, or sorry, 0 0.725. So I wanted to check that here on my height gauge. See that it's here at zero. I can kind of pull this back and zero it out again just in case. But I'll lift my gauge up. Then I'll put my part underneath it and touch off. And I see that I'm at 0.725 and then like half a tenth. Go ahead and measure the other side here. So I'm actually getting 0.726, which tells me that I have to make an adjustment in my work offset. I'm still within tolerance because I'm plus or minus uh, three thousandths here. So I'm well within the part acceptance. However, I just want to be a little bit more accurate so what I'm going to do on the next component is actually just lower my offset by, let's just say, half a tenth. Kind of see where that ends up, split the difference. I also printed out these part holders, which are pretty nice, um, so that the parts don't scratch on top of each other. <clears throat> this is a completed first operation, and I'm going to go ahead and load this in the machine and run second operation so it gets completed like the other part. So what I would do is take this, and I try to orientate my parts so that when I ever, whenever I have the lettering or the numbering, all I want to do is I want to flip it like this. Not like this. So I'm just flipping the part over and I have a work stop set up here uh, so that I don't have to touch off my XYZ zeros every single time. And I'll just put this into place. Normally I would do this with two hands and then I would tighten this while holding it against the work stop and also holding it down. But I just got one hand here and I've set my torque wrench up to 75 newton meters. So I heard a click, it means I'm in a good spot. However, my parallels are still loose beneath. So what I'm gonna have to do here is actually hit it with a dead blow hammer. I kind of treat this almost like changing a tire you're not trying to do one side or all in a row. So I'm gonna go in alternating corners. So I'll go one, two, 
three, four, and then a fifth in the middle. So we'll go one, two, three, four, fifth in the middle, and that should hit my parallels down in the, uh, into the vise so that this is perfectly flat. I can go ahead and continue with second operation. So now that the part is secure, I'm gonna go ahead and close the door. And if we're imagining that this is the first part that we're running for the day, I would go ahead, lock the door here, and I would go into my program manager, find whatever program, make sure it's matching the blueprint, and I would go ahead and look at the part. Scroll down here, make sure that I got the correct workpiece. Good. And I'm gonna go ahead and simulate this. And simulate it out to see if what I am machining matches the blueprint. This is just a 3D graphic. I'm not gonna be able to pull any dimensions or anything, but it gives me a good idea of what the program is gonna look like. While that's running, I'm also gonna go ahead and grab my blueprint here. And we can see that that's pretty close. And that's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna say that that blueprint, or sorry, that um, program matches the blueprint. We can go ahead and run this. So I'll go ahead and click on execute, load this into the machine. Now, since I already had my work offsets already set up, I'm gonna go ahead and change my work offset. And I was a little too tall, so I'm going to subtract that from my current Z location. So I'm gonna go down here into offsets. <clears throat> this is my G43, or sorry, G543 uh, work offset. I'm gonna to go to my Z value, and I'm just going to go ahead and minus, so I'm just typing this down here, minus 0 0.001. Sorry, I think I was gonna go half a tenth, so 0 0.005. So we're taking off a half a tenth, we're splitting the difference there, because we measured 0 0.6, or sorry, 0 0.726 on one side and 0 0.725 uh, five on the other side. So I just took off half a tenth there, and then I'll jump back here into our machine. So I'm jumping back here into the machine page. And then looks like I got the correct program number up there at the header. We should be good to go. Let's pretend that I look through all my tools and they match the tools that are here inside of my offset page or my tool list. Everything seems to match. And I can go ahead and let this part run. So I'm gonna go back here to machine, get back here in the machine and then I'll scroll all the way up, and then I'll go ahead and hit cycle start. But again, if we're just running this for the first time today, I've already been running a couple parts, but I would start my program with both my pots, so my rapid and my linear feed rates all the way off. So I'll hit cycle start, and we'll see that I get a warning here. It's telling me that it needs some kind of feed, so I'm gonna turn on my rapid so that we can cycle the tool change. So again, this is our rapid here on the top. We're cycling out a tool. And I'm gonna just turn off my rapids so that the tool doesn't accidentally gouge the workpiece or the work holding. And I'm gonna ease this in and I'm also gonna turn off my coolant to see if I make solid contact with the Z0 that I established for my work offset. So I'm gonna turn off my coolant there and I'm gonna go ahead and slowly turn up my rapid so that I can see my tool approach the part. I'll slow it down as we get closer and closer and closer. So this is G00, so I'm controlling it with my rapid right now. And I'm about to reach the end of the rapid command in my program. So my distance to go is zero. I don't have anywhere else to go now. I'm getting another warning asking for another feed even though I'm turning up my rapid it's not changing the color of the warning there so I might as well turn off my rapid and I'm gonna start playing around with my linear feed rate and this is why it's important for us to turn off that coolant because I wanted to see if I make contact when I turn on my linear feed so we'll go ahead and turn on our linear feed we're starting to move we can also see that the uh, Light has turned green. I can hear that we've made contact. Seems like we're pretty good. I'll go ahead and pass through here. Go ahead and turn off my linear. And it seems like we made pretty good contact. 
So it's gonna move into the next pass. I'm pretty happy with that, so I can go ahead and probably turn on my coolant. And let that run out. Okay, so right now, my rapid is turned on, but my linear is turned off. So as it reaches the end of this block, we can see that the color has changed back to that orange. It's telling us that it needs another feed. No matter what I do to linear here, it's not gonna move. Um, we can see here on our program that it's calling out for a G00. So I'm gonna turn this all the way down and I'm going to allow the tool to retract out now. So I'm gonna turn on my rapid. You can see that the colors change green and now we're cycling the tool change. You can also see our M06 changing to that end mill. And again, good habit to let the tool change, but then as soon as the tool changes, turn down your rapid feed rate so that we can control how this approaches. So once again, we'll go ahead and turn off our coolant. We'll turn on our rapid. So I'm going to ease my rapid in. It seems like the coolant turned back on for that specific line of code. So I'm gonna turn that off. And then I'm going to, again, turn my wrap it up and ease it into the part. Now, it's at a pretty good position. It's gonna continue moving down. Go ahead and feed that down. Can't go anywhere else. I'll turn my wrap it off. It's asking me for G01, linear feed rate, right here. And what I would normally do is I would ease this in and then stop the program and then measure out with a scale so that I could see if the tool in this instance would hit on the vise. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna turn this up slowly, but as it approaches the part and right before it makes a cut, so it's just easing in right now, I'm gonna stop it. And then I'm actually going to stop my program. So I stopped the tool, stopped the program, I interrupted it. It hasn't canceled the program, but at this point it allows me to go ahead and unlock the door. So I'll unlock the door. And as I said, I would normally take a scale and check to see if the scale can fit beneath the tip of the tool and then the top of my vise. So we actually can see that there is space between this. So as I run this path, I feel safe in knowing that there's at least some gap between the tip of the tool and then the top of the vise. So just a quick check there. We can also do the math for our distance to go, but I'm more of a visual guy. We'll go ahead and close this out. I'm gonna go ahead and lock my door. The program is still interrupted, so what I need to do is cycle start it back up to get it started again. So cycle start, we'll see that the tool and the coolant started back up. And I'm feeling pretty comfortable with this program, so I'm actually gonna let this run at 100% feed and 100% uh, so rapid and linear here. So we'll turn this all the way up to 100% and then we'll also turn this all the way up to 100%. Normally you'd want to probably single block this out or go through a more um, you know, step-by-step -step process, checking every single tool path. I know that this program is good. I'm not gonna sit here with you for the next 20 minutes and single block this out with you, but uh, this is pretty much how I would typically go through a second operation set up and run, and I would just let this run out. And at this point, I'm pretty confident <clears throat> that I can run production on this part. And I would just keep going back and forth with my work offset uh, as I measure each component to ensure that I'm within tolerance. So I think that pretty much covers it for this video. Um, the finished result is going to be the 98432 part. And it would look like this on the blueprint. So I'm going to be making a handful more, oh, sorry, a handful more of these, but I appreciate you sticking around and watching this video. Hopefully this was helpful, uh, and I'll go ahead and catch you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.